Paul Nation is a super fit father of three. Loves his sport, loves, loves his cycling and, and surfing. For him that was a, a good release, a stress release. Um, and it's, he just, it's just what he loved. A proud dad to five-year-old Cash, 12-year-old Tyler and Brittany, who's 15. You know, he loves his kids beyond comprehension and, you know, what we have is great. And he loves me so much. He wants the best for me and his, his kids. The best thing about him is that he just, he just loves to see you smile. Tuesday morning a fortnight ago. It seems like a normal day in the nation household. At 6am, Paul kisses his wife Claire goodbye and goes to work at a local building site. By all accounts, Paul put in a regular working day. He and his business partner came out to this building site mid-afternoon and when it came time to say goodbye, he said, see you tomorrow. Nothing unusual. But that was the last confirmed sighting of him. He, he never just didn't come home. He just, he just never does that. He's never done that before. You know, out of his character, just to, to, not, to not call or to not message and say, um, this is what I'm doing. By nine o'clock that night, Paul still isn't answering his phone. I sort of had a drive around. I thought he might have caught up with a few boys for a few drinks. So I sort of checked the, the local pub sort of car park, see if his car was there. But there's no sign of his distinctive four-wheel drive. And by later that evening, his phone isn't ringing out, it's switched off. Wednesday morning, Claire rang me um, and says, have you heard from Paul? And I said, no. So why? She says, he didn't come home last night. And the heart sinks straight away, why? You know, we, we come through here, we looked at all his surfboards, his bikes, um, his wetsuits, there's just no indication that um, He's going to pick up something and just, just go away. I was confused. I was trying to figure out what was going on. There's always pressures within life, family life, home, you know, work life. You know, there was nothing that I can say that could explain why he just wouldn't come home. The day after Paul disappears, Claire files a missing persons report. Paul's last mobile phone signals on the night he went missing a trace to a suburb near his house, and later to a timbered area north of the city. Yes, we do have information to suggest that he was in the Woodvale area and also possibly in the Pinjar area as well. The following Saturday, nearly 100 people come together to search at his last known whereabouts at Pinjar, 40 k's north of Perth. I think there was about 35 cars, um, family and, and friends, people that I haven't seen for 20 years came, came to help out. People that didn't even know him came to help out with the search. Sadly, it didn't turn anything up, but it still gives us hope that, that sort of he is out there. Well, that way. Paul's popularity sparks record views on the WA Police Facebook missing persons appeal. At this stage, this particular post that uh, was published last week has already reached uh, about a quarter of a million people, which is, uh, which is really positive. As news of his disappearance spreads, one of Paul's mates, Garth Chapman, flies in from Singapore to help. Would you mind uh, uh, taking that and perhaps displaying sure. it? And we'd be grateful for any information. Yeah, no Thanks very much. I suppose the challenge, because we don't know what's happened to him, you know, may, maybe it's not in his mind, and we, we just don't know. I mean, has he had an accident? Has um, has something sinister happened? Has he has he just gone rogue? I mean, we just don't know. We just can't process it. Are we sort of speaking to people and just maybe the hope that maybe someone might have seen him? Knowing that those friends and myself are here for him, you know, may help him uh, um, you know, make the right decision. There have been numerous sightings of a black four-wheel drive like Paul's here in the city and as far out as the Kalgoorlie goldfields. But he hasn't touched any of his bank accounts since that Tuesday. We do know, though, that he had a full tank of fuel and that would have taken him about 750 k's and that he usually carried around $200 cash in the vehicle. It's a distinct vehicle in that it's got um, some signage on the rear window uh, for Paul's business. 
so obviously that makes it quite unique. Um, but we're really asking the public to come forward with any information at all about Paul if they cite him or the vehicle. Anything that I, I hear, um, confirmed or unconfirmed, it all gives me hope because that's all I have. What's your worst fear? Well, just that he won't come home. That I have to tell that to my children and then just see their faces. That will be, that's just, that's what I can't think about right now. Now, nearly two weeks since Paul disappeared, his phone still goes straight to voice message. Hi, this is Paul from TP Formwork. I'm unavailable at the moment. Please leave a message. I can't, I can't ring anymore. Paul, if you're out there and you're listening to this, um, you know, your family needs you, we need you, we all love you and support you. Look, there's no pressure, just, just a call, just something to let us know or an indication that, that you're OK. Paul, we need you to come home. You mean the absolute world to us. And we want you home. We just want you home. Wanted correspondent Nick Way joins us now from Crime Stoppers WA headquarters. And Nick, Paul Nation's family is really praying for a big response from Wanted viewers tonight. This is a tough one, isn't it? Indeed it is, Sandra. And yes, they were hoping, and they are hoping beyond hope. They were hoping that he would turn up, make a call on Father's Day yesterday, that very special day his wife was waiting there, his three little children. But as we know, that just didn't happen. And in fact, his own father is flying in from the UK tomorrow to join the search. Now, police believe that Paul Nation is still probably within Western Australia, but there is also a possibility that he's heading to Brisbane because he's got a very, very close friend, a friend who's been a friend of his since in his teenage years, and they share this very, very strong passion for sport and cycling. So this really is a national call. If any of the viewers tonight or in the ensuing days see that very, very distinctive black Mitsubishi Triton four-wheel drive, it's got a push bar on the front with big spotlights and that very distinctive number plates with the surrounds, rideoz.com and for serious cyclists. If you see anything like that, report it into Crime Stoppers or police immediately because it could provide a vital clue and help relieve this family's heartache. Yes, Nick, let's hope there's a terrific response on that story.